Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know what you come to do. Can you turn me down just a little bit? Oh, bless his name today. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. You know, when I woke up this morning, I woke up on fire. Because the spirit of the Lord is just burning all in my heart today. I don't know about you, but when I wake up, when my mind stayed on Jesus, I expect everything to be all right. Amen. That's what it's supposed to be. When you wake up in the morning, you should wake up with the Lord on your mind to give him some praise. Because the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to just stand as I read the verse of a scripture before we go into prayer this morning. I want to welcome you all to Redeem Faith uh, Fellowship this morning. Those who are watching via Facebook Live, we want to welcome you here as well because we believe that we're going to have a glorious time in the presence of the Lord. God is here and his spirit is moving in the atmosphere. And when you know God is here, you can expect God to do something great in and through your life on today. We want to keep up, lift Pastor Terry up this morning. I got a call from her earlier today and she wasn't feeling well from taking a vaccine. And so many people are going through so much. Even taking this vaccine side effects is affecting their health. But we know that we have a doctor. His name is Jesus. And the scripture says in Psalms 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, and the Lord is the shade of thy, upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Amen. We also want to keep our pastor lifted up this morning as he's traveling on the road from Texas. That the Lord would give them a traveling grace on today. So, Father, this morning, we come giving you glory, honor, and praise. We know, Lord God, that you are the creator of all mankind. Everything exists because you're breathing us the breath of life. And we come this morning, God, telling you thank you. We thank you for last night's slumber, this morning awaking. We thank you that you kept us from danger seen and unseen. You allowed us to wake up closed in our right minds with the activity of our limbs still functional, where we can put on our clothes, shoes on our feet, food in our bellies, God. Our family doing well. You kept us, God, from, from the enemy when he came through the night looking for a victim. But God, you said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And God, because we rest in your presence, God, you surrounded us as a shield that when the enemy came in looking, God, he could not find us. God, we're excited today because we expect you to move in this house today. As we gather in one accord in this place, oh God, let your anointing fill the atmosphere. That you touch every heart, change every life, inspire those who are weak to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We know, God, that this is the day that you have made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. God, our souls shall make his boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And God, we say thank you that we're able to open up our mouths to give you praise one more time. We speak healing, God, in the atmosphere. We speak healing in the coming lesson homes. We speak 
healing in the place where your people are afflicted with sickness and disease. God, we lift up, Father God, Pastor Terry and many others, Father God, who have been ill right now, God, because of the vaccine. I plead the blood of Jesus against every side effect, every attack of the enemy that's come to kill and destroy their lives, oh God, that you would not let them die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And today, God, we say, have your way. We invoke your presence in this place, oh God. We invoke your power to fall in this room, oh God. We command the change of the spirit to flow in the atmosphere. That you shift the atmosphere, God. That what we come expecting, God, we will find in the house of God. Because we know, God, that the blessing is in the house today. The blessing is in the house today. Whatever we need, God, by faith, we can tap into the kingdom and we can know, God, you release the blessing upon every person, God, by faith because it's ours for the asking. You say you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask with the wrong motive. But today, God, we come asking in faith that you release the blessing in the house today, God. And we know, Lord God, that when you do this, finances will increase. When you do this, favor will be released upon the lives of your people, God. When you do this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives because we dwell in the house of the Lord. God, we say thank you for what you're doing in this hour, that you have your way, God even on the musicians, even on the songs we sing, even on the worship we give to you, God, that you break our hearts today to fix us up, oh God, that everything in our heart that should not be there will be broken by the power of the blood of the Lamb because we know, God, that when you break us, you say you will not leave us broken, but you mend the broken hearts. And you bind our wounds. And God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, even lift up those who are grieving in this hour, God. From the loss of a loved one whose hearts are heavy, God. We know, God, that you are the great consoler. You are the great comforter. You are a counselor. You're everything that we need, oh God, in our sad hour. Because you told us in your word that weeping endures for a night, but joy, exceedingly joy, will come in the morning. And we'll be grateful to give you thanks, oh God, and to praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise and hear the day. Because I know God is moving in the atmosphere. I don't know about you, but the fire of God is in this place today. If you need some joy in your heart, tap into the fire today. If you need some peace of mind, tap into the fire today. And I guarantee that God will meet you right where you are. You need healing today. All you got to do is just lift up your heads. Oh, ye gate. Even lift them up the everlasting doors. And the king of glory, he promises he will come into you and meet you right where you are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him for a moment. Hallelujah. God, we magnify you. Hallelujah. God, we exalt you today. Hallelujah. God, we worship you today. Hallelujah. We invoke your presence today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bow our hearts before you, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, 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 o
It's a war cry. Oh, 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 oh. This is our war cry. Oh, 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 oh. going through troubles and things are not going right in your life all you gotta do is get into a place of intimacy with God when you get in that special place that holy place God will meet you in your sad hour he'll come in the midst of your problems your situation he will give you such a peace that go beyond your comprehension. He'll give you everything you're looking for in the sanctuary where his glory dwells. But you got to want it. See, the thing about God, he ain't going to force himself on you. No, he won't. He leave the doorway open for you that you would have a heart to want to come into him and just keep, begin to worship. And when you worship him, chains fall off, shackles fall off, strongholds fall off, bondages fall off. Why? Because God is a holy God and he does not dwell in an unclean temple. So when you get into the place, you invoke his holiness. 
God is. You are holy. You're holy. Yes, God. You are holy. You're holy. Amen. You know, we come into the house of God to give God some glory. See, I don't know about you, but I come with the fire. I bring the glory with me because God on the inside displays his glory out of us. When we give ourselves and say, Lord, have your way. God will come in the midst of you to display his glory through you. Amen, amen. I want you all to stand as we go into our scripture. Have Minister Joe read the scripture today. Amen. Hallelujah.
At this time, we're going to have the uh, worship team come forth. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. I need about five of y'all to just scream, Lord, you are awesome. Say it again. Lord, you are awesome. Hallelujah. God, we bless you today, Jesus. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Help me to say, Lord. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah. You are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your love wasn't for your wasn't for your grace, I don't grace. know where It's our God. It's our God. One more time, say you're the name above all names. You're the name above all names. Lord, we bless you, Lord. Lord we you're praise worthy you. Of all praise. In my heart, you will see. In my heart, you will see how, how great, great 
is our God. Help me say how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Lord, you're worthy of how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Don't see how great. Oversee, oversee, oversee. Him today. 
We ready, God, to give you all of us, Lord Jesus. Everything inside of us, God, we will present to you right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, worship him. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Come on, help me say, let's say, bow down. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Come on, take yourself to that place. Say, bow down and worship him. God, we lay it at your feet. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume is awesome. awesome praise. Fill this room. Awesome presence, feel this room. This is this is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy. So come, come bow down. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So come. Come bow down. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Oh Lord, this is holy ground. So come and bow. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's what God is looking for. A heart that's yielded. A heart that's surrendered. That don't mind coming and bowing down at his feet. Just to give him some worship. I tell you, when you get in that position, you make the devil mad at you. Because in the place of intimacy with God, 
The devil don't understand what's going on in that place, in this holy ground. Because the Lord said without holiness, we can't even approach his throne. So this is holy ground. This is holy ground. Oh Lord, this is holy ground. So we come and bow down. Lord, we come, we come and we bow down. Lord, we come and bow down. Amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise in the house today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world for our redemption. You know, it's a wonderful experience when you wake up in the morning just to get in God's presence. It sure makes a difference in your day because you're putting him first. This past week on the radio show, Pastor Owens and myself were talking about why God chose us. And a lot of people in the house of God go to church out of routine. They go to church out of habit. They go to church without conviction. And when you come into the house of God, you come for various reasons. But we don't know why we have been chosen. You have many folk in the house of God, Sunday after Sunday, week after week, coming to the house of God and still don't know why God chose them. But if you read in the scriptures, Jesus says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. He said that you and I shall go and bear fruit. And he said that your fruit shall what? Remain. That means it keeps producing out of your life. And when you get into that place and you recognize that God loved me so much in my mess to think about me and he chose me, out of all the people in the world, he saw something worth in me. He saw some value in me. And he said, you know what? I put my name on you. That's shouting news today. To know that God chose us from out of our mess to bring us to right standing and right relationship with himself. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts for giving at this time. Prepare our hearts for giving. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that when you give, don't give grudgingly, nor out of necessity, but give from a cheerful heart. And God promises that he will open up the windows of heaven and shower down blessings he didn't say blessing. He said plural, blessings. Doesn't mean it's more than one blessing. He's going to give to you because of your obedience, according to his word. So if you all would stand out of the room, hallelujah, glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Walk with me, Lord. 
Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me alone. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, be my guide, Lord. Lord, be my guide. Be my guide, Lord. Be my guide. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Everybody stand up in the room, please. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. No. See, my grandma used to moan that song when she would walk through the house when I stayed with her. She'd moan. Mm -hmm, mm Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the gift and the giver. We thank you, Lord God, for your blessing upon every person, Father God. Those that had to give and had not to give, but purpose in their heart to give, oh God, but did not have it. I decree and declare the blessings and the favor of God to rest upon every heart, oh God, just because of the intentions of the heart that you would open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessings upon every heart that don't have enough room to receive, that we'll be blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. And we thank you, Lord God, that you would cause us, O oh God, to receive an overflow, to live in the abundance of your household, O oh God, that everything that we need will be supplied according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Remain standing, remain standing for our declaration. Yeah, we got to do our declaration one more time, just a minute. I want everybody to repeat after me. Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my, territory. my territory. 
Lord, enlarge my territory. Come on, they get radical with this thing. Lord, enlarge my territory. One more time. Lord, enlarge my territory. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Amen. I believe he would do it for you as he do it for me. Amen. God bless you. Maybe may be seated. You got one more song? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know God to be a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper? Hallelujah, God. And we just thank you, God, for being just that. In our lives, oh, we bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are here. Turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you. If you know it, help me sing it. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's declare it in this place. Say, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Say it again, Waymaker, promise, he's the light, my God, that is who you are, you are a miracle, a promise keeper, you're the light. In the, the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, you are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, yeah. You are here, say, you're mending every heart. God, we worship you, God. I worship you. We worship you. We worship you. you are here, God. You are here. Turning lines around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, say. You are here. You're mending, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Say you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Say way maker. Miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time, say you are a way maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Turning lines around, 
I worship you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worship you. Yeah, Lord. You are here. You're mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Because we worship you for being our healer. We worship you. For being our provider. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, I worship you. 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 Yes, God. Turning lives around. Yeah. I worship yeah. you. I, I worship, worship you. Because you. you are a way maker, miracle. miracle. Let me hear y'all say promise. promise. Light in the darkness. Light in the darkness. My God. My God. That is, that who, is who you are. You got to believe it. A miracle, a miracle worker. You ought to try him if you don't know him to be. My, my God, that is, that is who, who you are. are. Come on, let's say it one more time and declare and say, You are a, you are a, you are a, my God, that is who, that is who Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, we worship you. You are a way maker. We glorify you, Jesus. Come on, tell them, tell them, tell them. God, you're a way maker. God, you're a way maker. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. We sit you on the throne of our hearts today, Jesus. God, we magnify you. God, we adore you. We honor you, King Jesus. You are a healer today, Jesus. You are a deliverer today, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, shana na bo shata. Uro shata na ma kosa ma ma hase. Kina na bo kosa na ni ma hase ya. Ye kata ma ma kota ma ma haso. Ko na na bo shana na ma kasi ya. Uro shata na na bo. Ko shana na bo kota na ma ha. Kina na bo shata na na bo kota na ma. Uro shana na bo kasi ya. Uro shata. Kina na bo shana na na ma ko. Uro ma 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 haso ta. Uro ma kasi ya. Uro shata. Kina na bo ko na ma ha. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. 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 Worship him, God, we honor you today, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, na na ba 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 ba
For the Spirit of the Lord is moving in the atmosphere. And God is saying he's releasing the fire of his presence in every person's heart right now. He says, I am the Lord thy God. I am the all-consuming fire. He said, everything that's been hurting you, that's been afflicting you, that's been holding you in captivity, God says, my fire is being released to burn it now. Burn it now. Burn it now. God says, the fire is burning on the inside of you right now with an intense heat that you cannot shake off. So many of you are trying to avoid the fire of God. You're trying to shut God's voice out today. But God says, I'm moving by my spirit in the atmosphere. And I'm stirring you up on the inside because the fire brings a change inside of you. If you want God to move in your life, God said, begin to give him the worship. Begin to magnify his name because he's moving by his spirit right now in this place. God says, there's some things you've been praying for and you have not seen come to pass yet in your life. Don't shut up, my mama has seeking it, oh shut them. God said the things you've been praying for, you begin to lose your faith in the process of God, brother, bring deliverance in your life. God says in the midst of the fire, I'm stirring up faith to move inside you today. The God kind of faith and the faith of God is going to shake your foundation. God said you're going to fall on your knees before him. You begin to magnify his great name. Oh, Oh, God, thank you, Father. He's stirring, he's stirring, he's stirring, he's stirring, he's stirring, he's stirring. He said, if you want that fire, you got to say, God, I want it. If you want that God kind of fire, you got to tell God, I want it. God said, I'm not going to violate your will because sometimes you're stubborn. Sometimes you're selfish. Sometimes you're prideful. He said, but I want to release the fire. I'm breaking those things off your mindset that can bring a change in your life. Oh, Glory to God. Oh, Shandamahasiti. Oh, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yea, Kata Mahasiya. Oh, hallelujah. He shot my mahaso. Yea, Kata Mahasi. He shot my maha. Bring down the music a little bit. Bring down the music. God says, some of you been faced with a mountain. He said that mountain has been before your face as a hindrance. He said that mountain is people in your life that's trying to block your promise that God has for you. He says you've been giving them your power. You've been giving them your authority. So they've been using your gift over your life because you gave them the right to do so. But God says today, the fire is going to shatter the mountain before your face. You're going to see God begin to move by his spirit like he never done before in your life. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Let God have his way. Let God have his way. Oh, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to high praise. I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to high praise. Oh, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got a high praise. I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yes, God. Yes, God. Amen. Yeah. Oh, 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 praise him, 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 praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Whoa, 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 Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I will enter to his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, worthy. Worthy, he's worthy, 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 oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, 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 oh yes. Worthy is the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain for the foundation of the world, the King of glory, seated on a throne in heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. My Savior, Lamb of God, my conquering King, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we bow before you. Lord, we call on thy name. Lord, you're worthy. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Ooh. See, sometimes in the midnight hour, yeah, 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 yeah. when our king seem to go to sleep, I just lean in that toss and turn. I've been in call on the name of Jesus. Lord, how I need you in the midnight hour. God, I need you to rock me in the bosom of your arm. When I call on the name Jesus, I know you will comfort me, Lord. You will let me know everything's all right. Yeah! Yeah! You promised me, Jesus, you will be my doctor when my body's afflicted. You promised me, Jesus, you wipe the tears from my eyes and you will comfort me. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the fire burning in the atmosphere. God is stirring up our hearts today to get into a place of worship because the devil don't like your praise. He don't want you to worship the king of glory. But when you worship God, the heavens open up. When you worship God, the heavens open up. When you worship God, strongholds begin to break in your life. When you worship God, hey, he mends your broken heart. He binds up your wounds. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. That wayward child will come back home. When God begin to minister to your heart, he'll tell you everything going to be all right. Just keep on trusting. Keep on holding to the gospel plow. Don't let go of God's hand. God promised me everything gonna be all right yes yes it will 
Yes, yes, he will. He promised me. Yes, he did. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. God is encouraging us today to not quit in your adversities. There's so much trouble in our land. Everywhere we turn, there's a killing going on. There's some reckless driving, car thefts, Houses being vandalized. Families being broken. Mattress being destroyed. Everywhere you turn, there's trouble in our land. But God is trying to stir us up today to know in the midst of the storm, everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Yes, it will. The Lord thy God. In the midst of thee. He is mighty. And he will save you. Mm. For the Lord thy God. In the midst of thee. <laughs> he is mighty. <laughs> He promised he will save you. Just keep on holding. To the promises of God. For he promised me. That everything will be all right. For the Lord thy God. In the midst of thee. He is mighty. And he will save you. Oh, yes, he will. Yes. Oh, yes, he will. I'm believers in the house today. How you know God in the midst of you is mighty? He will save you. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. Doesn't matter how bad your situation is. Doesn't matter about the mistakes you made. He promises that every precious promise that he spoke over your life is yes and amen. And that's a God that's a covenant-keeping God. He will not change his mind about you. But what he promises he is able to perform. Amen, amen, amen. Could you please stand over the room for the reading of the scripture? Please stand for the reading of the scripture. Yes. Yes. Go Amen. Is it on? <coughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. As I begin to give uh, praise to God, I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen, church. Testing. But to the brother right here, <coughs> Harris, I heard as Pastor Charles mentioned about praise. God says the healing to your wife is in your praise, brother. And if you believe God, move on it. Because this is a right now word for a right now moving of the church. Amen. He said the healing, hallelujah, to your wife is through you. To God be the glory because to him you two are one. Amen. In the church of the living God. We serve a true and a living God. I stood there and I said, God, do I hear you? He said, don't play with me because you hear my voice. And upon hearing his voice, I move upon the spirit of obedience in the midst of the moving of the fire of God. Amen. A word went forth today, church. We don't have any time to wait. We don't have any time to get in our own way, church. But we got time to hear God. Amen. For a moving fire word in the church. Amen. To God be the glory and obedience to God. It's in your praise. It's in your praise. It's in your praise. It is in your praise. To God be the glory and to whomever will receive even of his blessing and of their blessing, mother, sister. Amen. To God be the glory. The word went forth. Amen. We got ears that hear and hearts that will receive in Jesus' name. I didn't plan on this, but I did plan on being here. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to have an announcement at this time before we move any further. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, announcements is, um, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, that the fish fry is this Friday coming up. It's the 16th from um, 11 to 4. If I, you can prepay, but I have got some people already prepaid, so you could come at any time to pick your dinners up. But if you get any orders or know anyone that would be interested in purchasing a dinner, this is our annual fish fry that we have every year. Um, the fundraiser tickets are going great. And if you have any to turn in or want any more, just see me after church. Um, I can't think of anything else that, I mean, I do need some volunteers. I, I really do need some. I need at least two people to transport, you know, to deliver meals. And I need a couple more people to help in the kitchen. So if anybody is available for it, I would greatly appreciate it. God bless. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remain standing for the scripture. <coughs> I'm going to do a couple of scriptures, but I'm just going to read this one in Jeremiah 33. And, um, two and three, Jeremiah 33, two and three. And then I'm going to go to first Peter. Hallelujah. And it says, thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. With thou knowest not, you may be seated. And my subject today, as I go to the next scripture, is going to be, why did God choose me? Why did God choose me? That's been in my spirit ever since the radio show. It's been in my spirit all week long. And, and as I began to ponder the thought in my mind, God began to show me here in Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah, well, at this time, was in prison. 
and he had a complaint before God because he was locked up. And God began to show me how so many times we may not be physically locked up, we're spiritually locked up. And he says, but even in the place of your spiritual confinement, I am God. I'm omniscient. I'm not omnipresent. And I'm omnipotent. He says, I'm everywhere at the same time. I know everything about you. And I'm all powerful. To where even in your place where you feel like nobody knows where you are. And you feel as if God has turned his back on you. The Lord is reminding us today that even in your place of captivity in your mind, he said, I'm still able to reach through the inner core of that one area that you've been holding back from me in your mind. I remember a few months ago when God told me that a lot of us have a treasure box in our heart, and in that treasure box is the secrets, the secret sins that we treasure in our hearts. These are the things we do behind closed doors that no one knows about. These are the things we talk about, folk backbiting, hating on other folk behind closed doors, gossiping on the phone. All this stuff that we do because of the carnal nature. And the only way to be broken is to acknowledge that God, I have a problem. And then he goes on and says, thus says the Lord, the maker thereof. And what he's referring to, the Lord who made the heavens and the earth and everything that exists. He says, he's the one that made it. And he says, the Lord is what? His name. Yahweh. El Shaddai. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Sitkanu. The Lord Miskadish Kim, the Lord of hosts, the Lord our shepherd. He's everything to us. He says, when you call upon me, he didn't say, I'm going to turn a deaf ear to you when you call, when you call in faith. See, the problem comes in, we call on the Lord without an expectation. Catch what I just said. We call on the Lord out of desperation, but not, but not in a place of faith, believing that God can deliver me. But we're calling on the Lord. It's a difference. You've got to recognize what tone of voice you have when you're calling on the Lord. Where are you in your position of your mind when you need God help? And many times we're calling on God out of desperation, but we're not calling in faith so we can believe that God can deliver me. But then he says, I will answer thee. Many times the children of Israel, you read throughout the Old Testament, found themselves in a place of captivity. And every time they messed up, made mistakes, they wandered away from God's will, God still had mercy. When they called on his name, guess what? He answered them. And many times we got to be understanding, be careful what you ask for. Because when you call on God for something in your life and it's not according to his will, God will let you get it sometime and then destroy you. So you got to know, what am I asking for? Am I asking according to the will of God or his permissive will? There's a difference between the permissive will. God permits you to do what you want to do, even though it's not my will. But when God releases the divine will in your life, he says it will line up with the word of God. And everything that God has destined to be in your life will begin to manifest by the spirit of the living God. He says, and show thee great and mighty things. That's awesome. That's extraordinary. To know that the God, the creator of the universe, who put everything into his place, the stars, the moon, the heaven, the earth, put them in their position, and everything created, worship him. He says, even that, I'm going to show you something greater than that. That's the God we serve. He said, that thou knowest not. 
So the other week, when Prophet Abel was talking about how God had a blessing in a place she didn't want to be, but because it was divinely ordered by God, she got in position and received the blessing. Sometimes we resist and we get hesitant when God is saying, I need you to move over there. I need you to go over there because somebody needs a word from the Lord over there. And in the process, I'm going to cause another person to come along and begin to bless you financially. You would be amazed at how many times throughout my life I travel in places that God told me to go. And in the process, God financially blessed me. I'm always in the mindset of expectation from God. Because if God tells me to do something, I don't have a problem doing it. Even if it makes me uncomfortable. God will sometimes give you something to do that he knows is going to check your pride. He will give you some place to go even though he knows you don't feel right going there. But because of the act of obedience, God says, when you obey my word, guess what happens? I begin to change your thinking. And when you get in that place, he's like, I commanded the blessing to meet you there. That's an awesome God who commands blessing to meet you in certain places. But you got to have a heart. Say, okay, God, I surrender all to you. Whatever this woman do, God, I'm going to do it without hesitation. I'm going to have an expectation. I'm going to go where you say go. I'm going to say what you want me to say. I'm going to listen to what you want me to listen to. And I'm going to change my thinking to obey your heart. Everything that happens in life. I heard a word this morning that your character is defined to your destiny. Your character. How you Present yourself before people will know what type of character you really have. Check this out. We can come into the house of God and we can come looking all pious and religious, all dressed in our best, very eloquent in speech. We can look like we got it going on. But in our hearts, we're crushed, we're broken, we're a wretch undone, we're miserable, we're full of sorrow, we're angry, we're bitter, and we cover all this stuff up as a facade. But God told Israel, he said, guess what? I'm going to pre expose your pretended righteousness. Because we look like we're righteous, but behind closed doors, we're partying. We're living like the world. We have the world mentality, the world attitude, the world lifestyle. And God says, I'm not satisfied with that. So I'm shaking some stuff. I'm stirring up your foundation. The thing that, that makes you unbalanced. Because I want you to be unbalanced with the world. I want you to be balanced with the spirit of the living God. Because the world needs to be unbalanced in your life. So when you try to fit in, you can't you keep on moving. Because you can't be still. Because it ain't going to let you stay comfortable. Which brings me to the next point. First Peter. Actually, you know, St. John chapter 15. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Verse 16, St. John 15, verse 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me. For years we were taught I found Jesus. For years. It was drilled in our minds. I found Jesus, and that's enough. But if you read the scriptures correctly, you didn't find Jesus. He found you. When you were in your wilderness, in your mess, he said, God says in Isaiah, so Isaiah, who can I send for us? He says, I looked for a man and couldn't find one to go and redeem my people. 
So he said, by my own right arm, I will bring salvation and deliver them, which is an indication I did not find Jesus. Because when I was dead in my trespasses and sins, he said, wherein he hath quickened us to make us alive, and he filled us with the Spirit of God, that we can sit down in a place of glory at the right hand of God in majesty on high. So Jesus says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. How many of you know what ordained is? He put an approval on you. He stamped his signet ring on your life when he chose you. He said, I put you in a position where now my spirit has validated who you are because I chose you. Then he says, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. What fruit? Many times I question God. God, what are you talking about? What fruit am I supposed to be bringing forth out of my life? We done read Galat you know, Romans, uh, no, no, Galatians chapter 5 that talks about the fruit of the Spirit. That's one of them. But that ain't it. Because he said, I ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and bring forth much fruit. He was talking about in this passage of scripture, how the father loves us so much that I'm the vine. He's a, he said, I'm the true vine. My father's the husband. Husband man. He said, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purchases and brings forth much fruit. Right? So he's talking about not just the fruit of the spirit, but he's talking about the gospel in your life. Because when you come to Christ, you have a mandate to preach the gospel. So when you get connected to the vine, the vine produces life inside of you and the life begins to produce fruit of the gospel out of your life to win souls for Christ. When God says you shall bear fruit and bring forth much fruit and your fruit should remain, he's talking about it's not going to wither and not going to die because the gospel never dies. The gospel is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, which is Jesus Christ himself, who is that gospel that lives inside of us. And then he says that whosoever ye shall ask of my father, he said, whatsoever ye shall ask of my father in my name, he may give it you. So whatsoever is what you need God to do in your life. God says, when you stay connected to the vine and the gospel is produced in your heart, you can ask me anything. Because the will of God, when your desires are the godly desires, guess what's going to happen? You're going to line up with the gospel. Your desires are going to connect to the gospel and the gospel is going to go to the Father from your heart. Say, Lord, I need a financial breakthrough. God, I need healing in my body. God, I need my mind regulated today. God, I'm in confusion right now. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's a spirit, God. And I speak to the unclean spirit, command to loose this hole off my mind that I can have a free access to the promises of your word. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God in the highest. And when you stay connected to the vine, everything that you ask God for, he said, guess what? My father going to grant it to be so in your life. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says this, but ye are a chosen generation. Everybody in this room is connected to a generation. But guess what generation he's referring to? The kingdom generation. He's not talking about your earthly generation. He's not really talking about your family. He's talking about as you have been chosen by God through Jesus Christ, now you're connected to the generation of God from the kingdom of God. And because you've been chosen, he said, you're a royal priesthood. The Levitical 
tribe, as the priestly nation, the people of God who bear the Ark of the Covenant, the people of God who bear the Word of God. God says, you're connected to a royal priesthood. Then he says, a holy nation. All this about God's people after you come to agreement with the word of God and recognize that I've been chosen. So if someone asks me, why did God choose me? Why did God choose you? What was he thinking about when he chose you? Guess what? He reveals you by revelation from the Spirit of God that he chose you before the foundation of the world. What did he tell Jeremiah? Before you were even born in the mother's womb, I formed thee and I called thee that you can be a, a prophet to the nations. So he says, I only called you to display my glory. So when I recognize I'm part of a holy nation, guess what? I can walk in holiness every day of my life because God says he sealed me with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not dwell in an unclean temple. So because I'm filled with the Spirit of God, I'm walking and walking and walking. I'm walking in holiness because God dwells inside of me. But I like this part. A peculiar people. Unique. You're different. You stand out. So when you go into a, a room of employees and everybody gets quiet because the Spirit of God walked into the room, the demons begin to tremble. So there they go again with that gospel. There they go with that Jesus talk. So guess what? We got to get quiet because if we say something. God going to check us by the power of the Holy Ghost and bring us to conviction. And I don't want to be convicted. Have you ever noticed that even in your family sometimes, if they're not walking with the Lord and you come around, they cussing, they drinking, they partying, they, they doing all kind of mess. And when you come around the room, everybody like, okay, it's time to go. I'll, I'll see you later, Auntie. I, I love you. Thank you for, you know, for what you did today. But I, I can't go. I can't stay here because I got to go. What happens is the divine provision walked in the house, which is the spirit of the living God, to bring a change in the house. And the devil began to recognize the power of God in your life. It says, you know what? We got to get out of here. Because we can't stay in the same place where the fire is. Because the fire is an all-consuming fire. But then God didn't stop there. So that ye should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That you and I can do what? Show his praise. Because God has been too good to me to be quiet. So when I walk in the room, the heavens begin to magnify the Lord. The praises come out of my heart. I will lift up my head, O ye gates, and enter into the kingdom of kings, right into his bridegroom's chamber. I can come into the presence of the most high God. I can tell God I'm grateful. For all the things you've done for me. I'm grateful how you took me out of my dark place. When I walked into a dark place, you didn't abandon me there. But you came down from glory. You walked into the room where I was. So the light on the inside said the darkness. He said to show for this marvelous light. Yeah. So when I walk in a dark place. I use an analogy of being a security officer. When you go into a business and the business closes for the day and your job is to check every room in that place to make sure everybody's out of that building. You don't go in there just flipping on lights everywhere you go. You don't do that. Why? You take your flashlight. You begin to shine that light in every crevice of that room to find if anybody's hiding in this place. And God said, that's the spirit of a living God inside of us. That when we walk into a dark place, the light begins to expose the darkness. The darkness, and here they come. I got to get out the way. Because here comes the saint of God. 
Here come a child of God. And the light is exposing my habits. The light is exposing my problem. The, ha- the light is exposing my addiction. The light is exposing everything I've been holding on to. And God said, the light on the inside of me puts the darkness to flame. The darkness got to get out the way. Because here I come. I'm walking in my authority. I'm walking with the word of God. I'm walking with the full armor of God. Because the Lord is on my side. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I walk into the room, the king will rise up from his throne. He will rise up and tell me, I got that area in your life. I got that thing you're holding on to. I got that problem in holding you down. I got the theme been holding you back. But he said, now the light has come. So now I can rise and I can shine. For the light of the Lord has risen upon me. And as I begin to move forward, darkness begin to get out the way. Because the word of God is bringing a change in our lives. Yes, it is. Every time I call on the name of Jesus, Darkness has to get out my way. I'm no longer being held back in my spiritual prison of doubt, fear, and unbelief. But I'm standing on the word of God. I'm trusting in the gospel plow. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand every day of my life, depending on the Lord. Hallelujah. Won't you stand out of the room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So do you know why you're chosen? God says he chose us because he loved us with an unconditional love. He loved that's irrevocable. A love that changes not. Said, that's what I did for you. Because you are mine. And I am yours. And I put my name on you as a seal, a promise. To remind you that everything you go through. I'm going with you. I'm walking side by side with you. I'm walking behind you. I'm walking in front of you. He said, every way you go, my presence is going before you. Moses cried out, Lord, show me your glory. And the Lord told Moses, he said, no man can see my glory and live. Do you know why? Because of the sinful nature. And God being sovereign, he's being holy, he's being majestic, he's righteous, he's just. So no sin can dwell in my presence. But God said, Moses, I'm going to do this one thing for you. I'm going to show you my backside because I love you. And God showed Moses his glory. The backside, just a glimpse. And it says his face began to shine with the radiance of God's glory. Guess what? The same glory is here today. You might be here today. You might be a backslider. You might be a sinner who never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But I want you to do this one thing to me for me today, is begin to repeat after me this prayer and allow God to bring a change in your heart, your mind, your soul, your will, your emotions, that everything about you surrendered. And I guarantee when you leave this place, 
you will leave with a guarantee knowing that I have been with the Lord today. So I want everyone to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for backsliding. Forgive me for being prideful. Forgive me for being stubborn. Forgive me for resisting you. And I thank you that even now, your grace is sufficient to meet me right here where I am. Now come into my heart. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, knowingly and unknowingly. Now restore me. Now save me. Now fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness for you. And I thank you that I am saved because your word says, therefore, if any man, that means me, be in Christ Jesus, I am a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I receive it now by faith, the new life, the new identity, the new nature. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the spirit of restoration because God is moving in the atmosphere right where you are to bring you to the fullness of revelation of who he is. I want to thank our visitors for coming today. Let's see, the brother came again. God bless you, brother. Thanks for coming again. Amen. Everybody else is saved, right? Everybody saved in the house today? Is everybody saved? Everybody know Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. If you saved, you know Jesus today. Give him praise. Amen. Well, if there's nothing else, we're going to dismiss and get out of here. But Father, we thank you for your word today, God, that it would not fall upon deaf ears. But Father, we thank you that the word that we have heard today, God, will convict all of our hearts to change, to examine ourselves when we go home, to see where we are coming up short in our walk with you, Lord God, and that you bring a change in our lives because we desire to be more holy and more righteous as we're being filled daily with the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing destroy every yoke, remove every burden as we submit ourselves to your will and to your authority. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You're dismissed. Hallelujah.